Hey, it's Bridget. I am your intuitive life and energy coach. I'm also the founder of Above Life Channel on YouTube and the Sunday Morning Coffee Podcast. So today I'm going to share with you a life resume. I was kind of joking about this, actually, when I was trying to do stuff to do my new website here. I thought, I don't want to list out my resume. That's kind of ridiculous for spiritual work. And then I thought, maybe not. Maybe it would be interesting for you to kind of see the evolution of the work that I've done over the last 20 years. Like, yeah, it's been 20 years that I've been doing spiritual work. We'll call it that. Um, I started off doing mediumship uh, two years after my father died is when I literally had this whole like explosion of opening the floodgates to my psychic gifts. I always thought everybody was really creative and clairvoyant and visionary and visual and all that. And I just thought I was creative and, and it turns out I'm just extraordinarily clairvoyant. <laughs> and so, yeah, that was back in 2004. So this year, as I'm recording this, it'll be 20 years. Yeah. So I am very fortunate to have been able to then start a business shortly thereafter with the encouragement of a friend when we were using um, the, we were trying to think of how to raise money for the breast cancer three day. And we were going to travel to do it to actually such a San Diego. And so she suggested that I, I do readings for people because I was doing them anyway, just for, just because it was, it felt like the right thing to do. And so I did, and I got the donations to be able to, to take the trip and to, to donate the funds. So that's kind of how everything started. And it was a kind of a side business type thing, a little hobby business for a while. And then eventually it wouldn't be until 2008, in December 2008 is when I left my full-time job. Uh, in the public sector, um, working in human resources, I was a staffing administrator at a large government agency in Minnesota, and I left that work to 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 in part do my business and also raise my children. So I had I was having my fourth baby at that time. So it all the timing just aligned. So. All right, so I'm going to share with you some of the things over the years, so you have a sense of what I've done. I've done a lot of retreats. I shouldn't, well, I shouldn't say a lot because it's not like I do them every year, but retreats was the thing that I kind of first started out doing because I enjoyed that. I thought it was, I, I just thought it was a cool way to bring people together. So this was my first retreat that I did in September of 2005 for the weekend. And it, we were at a home together for the weekend and I had a whole little agenda the purpose was to, to discover the light within you and to reconnect with your spirit. <laughs> nice. That's pretty simple. I mean, and it's old school, like, you know, <laughs> paper. Then um, these aren't going to necessarily be in order because some of them are uh, like one right on top of the other and stuff. So um, I also did a... I've done a couple of different retreats here in Minnesota in the last, from like 20, 2017 or 18, I did one. And then in 2019, I did one as well. So I did them here. I also have done a couple others over the years. In um, central Minnesota, I did one. I did um, a couple at the same place I, I was at here. And this was in Wisconsin. Um, so I probably, I'd say I've done six or seven retreats that I've hosted and coordinated. They're a lot of work, by the way, <laughs> if you ever think about doing them, it's a good idea to do them with other people because it's a lot of work, but they're fun though. And they're really enjoyable to do. Um, this was, uh, back in 2007, I had a party where I shared my vision with my friends and family and clients at the time. So I, back in 2007, this was June, 2007, I was actually working throughout the fall, early, the fall before that 2006 and into 2007 at a women's health center. 
And I did, um, I was teaching meditation classes. So I was doing ex experiences there in person. And then I also did um, private energy sessions there because I had also got my certification in Reiki, um, which is not my favorite, by the way. Like if I have a choice, if somebody's going to work on me, I don't, I don't like, um, I don't choose Reiki. I would choose more of a, a healing touch. I have, a, I also have certification in healing touch level one and level two, but that was right after Reiki. So healing touch level one and level two, I think was in 2006 is when I did that through the college of St. Catherine here in, in Minneapolis, um, through their holistic health care program. It was like a continuing education class for like nurses and healthcare professionals, and also the community could participate. So I, I, um, took that class. I registered and took that college class over the weekend. So again, that's called healing touch, very heart-based. I love that one. Um, so this, these are my Reiki certifications here. And the first one I got was August 17th, 2005. And the second one I got was in December of 2005. So August and December of 2005, I did Reiki. Now that was long before it was a thing, you know? So it was kind of a, I got some friends together and we were, we ended up um, going to this class together. So I mentioned that I am a coach. I'm actually a life coach. Like I've had all the hours of training and certification from the International Center of Coaching in Minneapolis. And I graduated. So it was multiple weekend classes. Taught, like there's a multiple hours. I don't know how many hours it says it was, but it was a lot. Yeah, it was a lot. Anyway, um, it was great. It was life-changing. But that was, I graduated in October, October 16th, 2006. So I did that. That also was really helpful in my HR work because at that time I did performance management. I also did um, organizational development and learning. And so my life coaching certification was helpful then. So that was in October, 2006. And then let's see. Oh, and I got this certificate. Um, during, I think it was late, the late 1990s, I actually started working on my master's degree in public administration at Hamlin University in Minnesota here in St. Paul. And they had just started their law school not long before that. And so the public administration and the law school were kind of partners. And they had a series called Alternative Dispute Resolution, where the law students could do it, but also the public administration students could do it. So I took that series where you get on the state Supreme Court list for mediation or arbitration. Um, so I took that whole series, which was fascinating. That was like late, um, I think it was 98 or nine, probably 99, actually. Now that's not a psychic thing necessarily, but the conflict dispute resolution piece comes into play here because I also have a, uh, what would you call it? A certification from, it was a training, a circle keeper training for restorative justice from Washington County for community circles, for being a facilitator for community circles to help heal the harm. Um, it was in part co-facilitated by a Lakota medicine man who happens to be one of my mentors who now is in the afterlife. You've heard me talk about Red Turtle Bear. He was one of the co-facilitators of this and he's actually traveled, he traveled internationally to do this kind of training for restorative justice. Um, it's called being a circle keeper. So I got that in, oh, October of 2005 as well. That was on the 29th of October. And then let's see, I also have, Let's see. I have a certification of ministry. <laughs> so I am actually certified or licensed and I'm licensed in the state of Minnesota because I registered my certification. I can do weddings <laughs> and I can also oversee baptisms, you know, rituals like that. And then also um, 
um, memorial services and things like that. I haven't done any memorial memorial services. I don't think I've done any baptisms either, but I've done weddings. I've done like three or four four weddings, I think. Yeah, most recently, two years ago, I did one. So um, I have a cert uh, credentials of ministry. And that I got in 2010, August 2010. I have that as well. And then let's see, I have, these are just, now these are just the certi certifications that I found. I've attended other workshops and things. Like I, I took a, a shaman journey class over the course of a weekend that was offered um, at Lake Harriet Spiritual Community Center. Um, by a woman who's a very well-respected shaman in our area in St. Paul actually area. And um, she's also an animal communicator. And so I did that. I can't remember the dates of that. It was probably 2010, 11, something like that, maybe 12, something like that. Um, but I did that as well. That was when I got um, one of my animal totems, uh, Margaret, and she is a sea turtle. And so, yeah, I'm very comfortable with the animal totems as spirit guides. Okay, so then let's see, I, in, um, during the 2020 thing that happened, like in the spring, remember that? Yeah, I remember that. Um, I actually took a class that I had this opportunity. I love horses. I really, I don't ride. I've never had a horse. But I love them. They're such intuitive creatures. And I've been drawn to them. And I met a woman at an expo, an event that I was speaking at. And she had this whole therapy, uh, therapeutic set up around her horses. And she worked with school districts and um, youth. And she worked with um women in difficult situations in life transition. She did a lot and she did things. I think she did stuff with recovery and addiction too. I'm not hundred percent sure, but she's in Northern Minnesota and I, she was amazing. And so she introduced me to the work with horses and I just fell in love with it. And so I found out where she got some of her credentialing from other as a, as a, a therapist, lots of therapists took this class and I had the opportunity to take it as a coach because I was a certified coach. So I was able to apply and be accepted into this program. Um, it's natural lifemanship. It's working with horses and it's equine assisted therapy or equine assisted coaching. And so I took it again, trauma informed care based. And I was in this class with all these other therapists and it was like, whoa, but I did it all online. And um, during the that time when we were all stuck at home, that's why I did it online because I was supposed to go there, but they had to cancel all that. So um, I did it for four months. It was a lot of work. It was uh, 30 continuing education credits for therapists and so psychologists. <laughs> and it was amazing. It was amazing. So it gives me a real balance of understanding relationship because that's the prime thing in working with horses and things in healing and like feeling into the body and the natural rhythmic repetitive movement of the body. And the body is so important in intuitive work and in energy work. Yeah. Okay. So I have some others also that I did not share that I don't know if I have them in here or not. Oh, I do. Good. I do. Um, I also, I did a weekend, a soulful women's retreat weekend in San Rafael, uh, California, which is kind of by the San Francisco Bay area. And that was, um, that is when I met Ariel Spilsbury and Elaine Kalila Sophia, um, Dowdy. And, um, it was just an incredible, yeah, soulful woman's experience. We'll say it was just really amazing, but that was when I was exposed to divine feminine archetypal energies and priestessing work. And, um, it just, Wow, changed a lot for me. It was a heavy duty, a lot of work. And I wasn't ready to go deep into that work that was back in 2013 at that time. But I, I got introduced to it, kind of attuned to it, and then came back to it when I was ready to really dig in deeper to archetypal energies and work with the divine feminine in different ways. 
So um, I did that in 2013 and Ariel Spilsbury is the one that uh, is the 13 moon mystery school uh, woman who channeled in this really interesting and, and incredibly powerful archetypal energies. And so it's a, there's a 13 moon Oracle deck you can purchase. That is that. So, and then Elaine ended up creating her own priestess temple called priestess presence. You can look that up and she actually has a card deck too. It's across the room here though. Um, a Magdalene Rose deck. Again, her name is Elaine Kalila Sophia uh, Dowdy. And she was a th psychotherapist and then just really full on embodied the divine feminine work. And she's in California area too. Nevada City though, where she does retreats and things there. Um, but she has a, a huge online temple. So you can check that out. Priestess Presence as well. She's one of the people that I initially uh, was connected into and kind of worked with um, her ener the energy that she brought through. So um, I also have... At that retreat that I was at, I met a woman who owns Earth Harmony Wellness Center in Dover, New Hampshire. So if you're in the New Hampshire area or anywhere out there, just take a weekend trip and head over to Dover, New Hampshire to Earth Harmony Wellness, the Oasis Shop. She has a storefront there with gorgeous crystals and tools and supplies such a loving environment and she does healing work and and she is a priestess in the divine feminine 13 moon 13 moon mystery school but she's also when she and i met she was doing a lot of healing work through um the camadon academy which is known as the mm method or melchizedek method not the guy that you look up online melchizedek that does like the ET stuff, not that. It's different than that. It's Alton Alton Camden. It's out of Australia. He actually did a beautiful speech before um, the United Nations about peace and planetary peace and you know vibrational healing and uh, meditation and that kind of thing. So he's just quite interesting, quite an interesting fellow. Um, but I took levels one through four from her of the Melchizedek method, which is a high vibrational attunement where in, I mean, it's in incredibly intensive. Okay. And I went out there what four times to do the work with the workshops over the course of several years. I think I started in 2015 and went for the first time when I started getting visits from this Melchizedek guy. I'm like, who are you? You kind of look like Archangel Raziel, but you're not. Kind of look like a Santa to me. And it turns out it was Melchizedek. And I knew that I, you know, because I finally got the name because, you know, with me, with names, it's not a thing. And so I called her up and I said, hey, dude's coming to me now. So I think I need to come and take one of your classes. So I did. And then I took the next one and the next one and the next one and the next one. And it's really using like energy from Thoth and energy from like Emerald Tablet kind of wisdom we're talking about here and the Egyptians and just really advanced metaphysical energies of light codes and encodements with using sacred geometry and ancient as well as future energies. It's really, really, really powerful. And so um, I am up through level four with Melchizedek method. Yeah. So it's a known for deep clearing work. So when you have somebody that needs a house cleared, that's the kind of person you want is somebody that has had that attunement and or a person. Mm -hmm. It's really good for releasing the old, for releasement and clearing work. And I've always done clearing work. I've always been that person. And because I had so many uh, paranormal experiences growing up and am very clairvoyant as well as clairsentient. So I see and I feel sense. Um, I've always had um, the ability to be able to connect with psychic kids and really help them at a higher consciousness level, kind of set up the grids in their home and then like working with the parents and that kind of a thing. I've also done work with um, children who do not speak who are nonverbal um, and communicating with their higher self. I've done that. I've had that opportunity. I've done some, um, I've talked to some 
recognizable people, um, but I don't share my client list or anything like that. So I've had quite an interesting experience. And, and recently now, we're about five months out from my near-death experience. I actually had um, emergency open heart surgery when I was actually out for a week out on the East Coast. And that was a whole experience in and of itself. And so now I'm working with some deeper earth grid energies and grounding and really working through the process of understanding what that means for me now. And part of it you're seeing here is me getting the opportunity to share with you and pass along with you the knowledge, wisdom, and experience that I've had. And I have this, I know that I have this unique ability to talk with your brain just as much as I can communicate and connect with the metaphysical, I can talk to you analytically because I am a recovering overthinker. I'm still an overthinker, but I used to be a major type A personality and now life is different for me. So I work on a basic premise of body, mind, heart, and soul. And those four aspects of you are simply what I look at and what I work with. So it's really easy. There's just four little blocks that I, I look into and then I see the grid system around you and I see where things are lit up, where there's an opportunity for something to be shift or moved or brought into your awareness or just let go without having to go deep and figure it out and know. But a lot of times my clients do need to talk about things and, and, and really think through them, which is fine. But while that's happening, we're moving energy, your healing team and your spiritual helpers are moving energy. But that's why I offer different types of coaching style sessions too, like on track coaching, which is much more project based, accountability based, that kind of thing, but also with an energetic and intuitive base to it. So you can use all your, your resources. So, yeah. All right. So that is my life resume. It's pretty long now, probably, but at least up to this point, and I'm sure I forgot multiple things. I'm, I'm thinking, sitting here going, I'm sure I forgot multiple things, but there you go. And all that doesn't really matter as far as how credentialed I am. What matters is, is do you and I fit? Are we a fit? Like, do I resonate? Do you resonate with me? Do I resonate with you? For this time that you're in, for where you're at right now. And if you're watching this still, the answer to that question is probably a yes. <laughs> so now just go look at the services, the menu of services and see what's available and see what you can tap into. Maybe it's one of the monthly uh, groups, the inspiring psychic experience that I offer, or maybe it's an energetic forecast once a month, or maybe it's a private session, or maybe it's a twin flame scenario that you want to work through, or maybe you're a priestess and it's priestess coaching. There's a whole wide variety. The sky's the limit, right? <laughs> hey, thanks for watching.